Hi, it's Captain Mike uh, with you again. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, various molds that are used to cast uh, any number of things. Um, you can cast uh, in the right type of mold, you can cast resin, uh, you can cast plaster, you can cast ceramics, and you can cast glass. Um, you can cast silicone and concrete, among other things. But all of these require a mold of one type or another. And uh, we're going to talk about these different kinds of molds today. To start with, we're going to talk about um, the, we're going to talk about um, plaster molds used to cast slip. And they come in different um, types. This one here is a uh, two-piece mold that is used to cast uh, a little vase. And once it's cast using slip, then you will uh, fire it in the kiln and it will become bisque. Then you will glaze it and it'll be a glazed piece of pottery. If you want to take it a step further while it is still in clay form before it is bisque, you can cut it along the seam and, you know, make a little face to hang on a wall. Just any number of things that you can do with them. But that is a two-piece slip mold, it's standard. That's what a lot of folks use just for casting up all kinds of 3D models. This is a commercial mold. I bought it. And you can make your own. This is the first mold that I ever made before I did anything. Uh, I was actually into trying to make a mold more than I was casting something. But it's just a little standard mold you can get on YouTube and there's all kinds of great videos that tell you how to do this. Uh, I will do some videos on how to make some molds and some of the molds that we're going to talk about here. But uh, mainly what I want to do now is show you what is available and what they do. We just covered a uh, standard slip casting mold that you can buy. I made this. This is a tile mold. And again, it's made from plaster. And the reason you use plaster is when you pour the slip into it, the plaster absorbs the moisture and causes the slip to become a solid clay body. And then you can fire it. Uh, and it will show up kind of like this. This is, this is just one that was fired. And uh, a little dragon. I do a lot of these dragons. Um, and then, of course, I have this is another plaster mold. And I made this plaster mold so that I can make these bowls right here. And it's, this is a bisque bowl. And when they first come out, they are kind of gray. And it's, it's still turned to mud if you put it in water. Then you fire it, it becomes bisque. Then you can glaze them in different kind of glazes. And you, you have that. So those are, those are plaster slip casting molds where you use slip, which is liquefied clay. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you've never seen any of it, uh, check on YouTube. Somebody will show you how to make it and how to use it. I even have a video on how to pour a basic uh, slip cast. The next thing that you will, uh, kind of mold that you will run into, it's also made from plaster, are called sprig molds. And they're very shallow type molds that I pour slip in them, but they're designed really to press clay into, moist clay. You press it in and smooth it off, and then it'll dry a little bit and pop loose, and it gives you a perfect impression. That's one there of frogs and turtles. This is one of birds. And they're, made of, they're all made of plaster. And there's just any number of things. You can get online and you can find, they're called sprig molds. And there's just an endless supply of things that you can do. But you can only use clay in those. You can't pour anything except 
regular clay or slip clay. Now, we have a silicone sprig mold. It's made from some kind of RTV rubber. And uh, I have poured slip in these before. It just takes forever for them to dry and they want to curl up a little bit so you have to get them out of these molds just as soon as they turn leather hard put them down where you can smoosh them down and flatten them out it's because the silicon doesn't absorb any moisture and so it's it's problematic if you're using uh, slip not so much if you're using regular clay but it's it's what it's another type of sprig mold and uh, the um, next thing that we'll talk about will be ceramic molds that uh, you will use to make uh, glass stuff out of. And it comes in pretty much uh, something like this, which is called a texture mold. And you just cut a piece of glass and put it on top of it, put it in your kiln, and it takes on the texture. And uh, this is a smaller version of that. And they're really nice to, to, to make and they come in several different types there. Uh, then you have what's called a ceramic uh, slump mold. Again, you take a square, a rectangular piece of glass and lay it on top of this, decorate it how you wish, and as it fires it takes on the unique shape of this particular piece. But it's a slump mold and it slumps down into it. And the reverse of that is called a drape mold. And it's where you take something like this and you put a round piece of glass over it and it will slump down in it. If you make it a little bit bigger, it'll slump down on the edges. There's any number of things you can do. And yes, this is a stainless steel dog tray. It's, it's just a dog watering, feeding bowl and stainless steel works great for that. Uh, I coated it with uh, a glass release agent and that's what a, a drape mold or you call it, hear them called hump molds. Uh, the next thing that you have in the ceramic line of molds is uh, frit casting molds and they come in all shapes and sizes. I made this butterfly. I have lots of butterflies that I made and I'll do a video on how to make these also. But you put crushed glass in here, you heap it up, and when it melts, it creates an image, a positive image of the negative of the mold. And in this case, a butterfly. So those are all ceramics. And they are used for glass. And really nothing else. Now, the concrete molds, the one I used to make this little turtle out of, uh, uh, it requires, uh, to make the mold is a whole totally different thing and I'll, I'll have to get into that later, but the mold looks something like this. It's a latex mold and uh, it's very flexible and it requires a backing. You can make these out of fiberglass. I made this one back in the day when I was doing a lot of vacuum molding before I decided it wasn't worth my time. But I did make a few molds with and backing plates for these molds. And how this works is you pour your, you can put plaster in here, you can put concrete in here, any number of, of casting materials and they will, you can get them out. The problem is if, if you don't make it out of latex, you can't get the head and some of these undercuts out. But the little turtle will pop, it'll pop right out. Even concrete, if you let it cure, it pops right out of that mold. You just peel it off like a glove. And it is called a latex uh, 3D mold. And you can buy these online. Uh, uh, Ghost Statue sells a lot of different kinds. I, uh, in fact, is the first ones I bought, I got from Ghost Statue off of eBay. Then I learned to make my own. It just requires material, and again, I'll hopefully can get along around to covering that because that's kind of extensive. Uh, you have these molds here that really don't go along with glass or plastic. You can uh, cast plaster in them just fine. You cannot put a resin in here like this. 
the resin is cast in a mold simple, sim similar to this because resin will not stick to this. So I have the little frog mold and it's very intricate. The, you can't cast this frog out of anything else other than resin because he'll break his little feet. Ask me how I know. But uh, uh, you can cast plaster in these flowers. You can also cast silicon or RTV material in them. And just like this little butterfly right here, I made this mold by casting first a uh, an RTV or silicone mold of it, positive, and then I go through the process of back and forth until I get what I need in a ceramic mold. Again, it I'll cover that later. This is a really neat mold here that I picked up at uh, Hobby Lobby. It's made out of a very tough material. It's plastic, but it's very tough. The, the new neat thing about this is on this side it produces a really good plaster mold for doing a ceramic owl. On this side, it'll do a positive. And so you can do a positive if you wanted to do a positive of the owl just out of plaster or something. Again, you cannot use resin in these. They'll stick and you've ruined your mold. Now, these, I have a lot of these. These are standard what I call plaster or concrete casting molds. Again, they come from Ghost Statue off of eBay. A lot of people sell them, I guess, but I, Ghost Statue is a great company and I just buy a lot of stuff from them. Their prices are good. It's made out of a very tough plastic. And in this case, I poured, uh, I think it's dental plaster, but it's any kind of plaster work. And of course, I just colored it up. I put powder on the front of this thing and then just cast it. And it, and it makes a really nice cast. Uh, so that is uh, a plaster or concrete mold and uh, pretty much uh, that's all there is about molds. You have your, you have your, uh, your plaster molds used for sprig or used for 3D slip casting. You have your uh, ceramic glass molds for frit or uh, as I mentioned before texture mold uh, and you can do uh, drape, slump, and uh, in glass and uh, I'm sure there's some other things that I didn't count but I just wanted to tell you all about about uh, molds, the different kinds of molds and as the time goes on and I get the opportunity I will show you how I make different molds and uh, then you can hopefully can do it too. So that's it. That's all we have on different kind of molds. I hope that it clarifies uh, things for uh, you all that really have not got into casting any particular medium yet. Uh, but this is what's available right now uh, commercially and things that you can make. So, um, appreciate y'all watching this, and we will uh, get on to making the molds for you. I'm Captain Mike, and I'm out of here.